One, Jason Griffiths. Two, Simon Beck. Five, Paul Hunt. Six, Steve Ward. Seven, Dave Leach. Eight, Dennis McCulloch. Nine, Ian Locker. Ten, Bob Jackson. Eleven, Tim Poole. Twelve, Stuart Jones. Fourteen, Brian Venables. Fifteen, Gary Dines. And he's the big age coming down here now, having ridden so well last night. He's here remarkably early. You're early, aren't you? You know me, Jeff Moe's early. Well, there's five minutes to go to the start of the race yet. Uh, I've got to go back to the toilet, yeah, I'm all right, Jeff. All right, well, hope you ride as well as you did last night. Terrific effort there. Bud Jackson jumping from bike to bike. Won the 250 there a few minutes ago. 250 class. He's Tim Leach as well, no mistaking him. Camera on his helmet. <laughs> And it's facing up into the sky. I wonder what significance does that mean? He's going to be lying on the deck across four ways. Let's hope not. Jason Griffiths then. ZXR, what a mighty machine it is. Slick tyres for this race, of course. And you just feel the tension go up a notch for this. You know this is the real thing. I'm not suggesting any of the other races haven't been, but there's something special about this. There's Steve Ward with his RC30 Honda, not the Castrol Honda. And he's Bob Jackson, who won the big race last night with the McAdoo Kawasaki. Can he win the championship? I know he'd dearly like to. Terrific field for this, and we are looking for a few 250s and 600s, but you're not going to get a sniff of the 750s in this one. You really are 750cc powered, or you are out. Can't believe a 600 wouldn't be good enough round here, but it won't. Rolf Sutcliffe passing by. Herbie Kelly, Decker's brother, coming along in the background. I think it's 21, is Neil Richardson, is it? That's from memory only, and you go to so many meetings, you confuse them. Let's look up on the new super sheet. Yeah, it is, and the sun is blazing down now. It's taken another few degrees in the last few minutes as Simon Beck brings the Ducati down. And I tipped him to win last night. It was miles out. He didn't get going somehow. Terrific performer in the TT, of course. Third place in the TT. And, of course, Ian Duffus took second on a Ducati as well. But the clutch gave trouble on Beck's machine. And he was lucky to get it home in third. I think that was the Formula One. All this is unscripted, incidentally, and it stands for absolutely nothing other than just relying on your memory, which is not what it was, but it seems months ago, doesn't it? In actual fact, it's only about five weeks ago. Well, it's great to have the good weather for the 40th anniversary. There's been some clinkers down here. We've got drowned from time to time. Tuesday night wasn't much better. And the field are in the holding area now, and it is a full field of 40 riders. In fact, I think it might be 45. 45, I think, was the maximum allowed. Get Tim O'Hanlon to count them up for me. Hey, I'll have a look at that sheet, you sir, and see how many you make it. Forty-five, he says there are, so it's a full grid. And uh, well, the thought of trying to fit all that lot into that funnel at uh, Balabeg. Roy, I don't think you'd better try and do the numbers or it'll be like bingo. I think you better just take the first six or so because it's going to be incredible. But uh, you're all set for this big one out, Balabag, then? Yes, Jeff. I've just looked at the prize fund, actually, for this and quoting you as you usually do from No Limit. Whoever wins this race, it will be worth about a £1,000 to us because that's what they're racing for, 1600 per second and all the way down. Yes, it's only going to be numbers here at Balabag, I would think. But what this is the accumulation of what's all been the hard work, the Southern 100 Championship. And just the noise back there is getting the old adrenaline flowing here because no matter what happens, you've got so many good riders in this particular field, I would think that nobody is going to get away from them, anybody else. Bob Jackson, the winner the other night, Paul Hunt right on his tail. Dave Leach, he's riding well, two wins today. Simon Beck, well, it's 
revealed that he did have clutch problems, I think. Was it that in the TT or was it here the other night? Because he did seem to have a bit of trouble getting around Balabeg on the big Ducati. But if he's got that sorted out, he won't be too far away either. So it's good stuff. Tim Poole, well, I hope he has better luck. He's down to ride number 11 there, two retirements. I don't think he even got started in one, but if he did, he only got, didn't get too far. At Stuart Jones, another good rider, local rider, Brian Venables. He'll be up there amongst it. And the top 14 there, all on the 750s and the faster machines. be interesting to see whether Ian Locker is out on the 600 to dice with them and whether Dennis McCulloch is on the 250. But it's going to be good stuff, Jeff, and I'm certain that you're looking forward to as much as I am. It looks as though Jeff has disappeared, has he? No, he hasn't. He's here, but I thought you were going to take it through because they're on the road oh, now for well. the whole, for the uh, warming up lap. There'll no. be a few seconds yet before they get to you. The last ones are just leaving the paddock here now, and there are no problems whatever in this. And who's going to win it? Can Jackson repeat last night's victory, or will Beck get the Ducati there? There's a few others as well. And uh, the leaders on the warming up lap should be at Balabag. Yes, they shouldn't be too far away. The old flashing lights, the hazard warning lights, if the car comes through and the machines following them, there's one who's taken a bit of an advantage there and getting a good fast trip down, getting the tyres nice and sticky. That's number six. Number five, no, it's Paul Hunt. So he's starting early there. Number five, Paul Hunt, safely through Balabag. Got no bottom fairing on that, so he might have had a few problems. There's Bob Jackson on the McAdoo Racing Kawasaki. Number 14, Brian Venables, 27. I must admit, this sheet makes it an awful lot easier. Adrian McFarlane, Steve Ward, sedately through as well, just getting a bit of acceleration to get the tyre nice and grippy. There's Simon Beck. Simon Beck, well, he started off campaigning in the Grand Prix on what then at the time was a very, very expensive Honda but proven the investment was well worthwhile and there's absolutely, looks like hundreds of machines approaching here, Balabeg. And as you already mentioned, Jeff, it's going to be numbers only as they approach here on the first couple of laps till they get settled down. Twelve laps in this particular race and it looks as though everybody is out. Number 23, there's Bud Jackson, 47. 47, Brian Appleton, 55, 59, 62 as well. 36, they're all going through now on their warming up lap. 36 there being Stan Thomas, 45, 64, and Dave Leach bringing up the rear. But it wouldn't surprise me if he's not last there going through on the warming up lap with his two wins today that he's not going to be up there amongst it at the final countdown at the end of this Southern 100 Championship. Event number 11 on the calendar. Just an inter indication there when you were saying you used to do a very good impression of a Manx North and the old MVs were quite better if I remember rightly used to give the old white stuff round the lips but the the big event of course if you could get the old uh, piece of cigarette paper in the back brake of a, a push bike and get a nice big downhill drop and get the old cigarette paper battling against the spokes it was all good stuff there put the white handkerchief round your mouth and you were set you could be anybody you wanted to be in the TT do you remember those days Jeff? Right, so we're set for this one then, but the machines are not yet on the grid, but they will be shortly, but they are slower assembling, of course, because they are slowed by the red flags at Castletown Corner to close everybody up to make sure that when they come down to the grid, there's a minimum of delay waiting on the grid for the reasons we've stated dozens of times before, that the engines cannot be allowed to unduly overheat. I can only hope this is a good, fast, safe race. You do get a little jittery when you think of 45 riders flying into Balakagan at about 130, 140 miles an hour. But the majority, of course, have appeared in this by invitation. In fact, all of them have, so they've got results to back up the pedigree of being invited to be in this race. And I would, at this point, like to acknowledge the Ronalds Way Shoe Company's involvement in this for many, many years. They have supported this Southern 100 Championship and in the old days, I don't know whether they still do, but they used to give little envelopes with cash in to every rider in the championship on the grid, and many's the time I've been asked to mine them. Used to be a good little learner, actually, because you used to stay away from the prize presentation, make 25 quid an hour, nothing of the kind. But seriously, they used to do that. I think now it's dished out officially. But it was a fiver then, and a fiver was a fiver in those days. 
and the Ronald's Way Shoe Company have stayed faithful to it. Their staff also support this event, of course, in great numbers through marshalling. Many marshals around the circuit, too, and over the years, lots of them have stayed faithful. I see some faces who were marshalling in 55, and they've never flinched. I've seen part of every Southern 100 since its inception, not every race by any means, but part of every meeting, and uh, it's a record I hope to maintain for a long time to come, God willing. So the riders now are on the starting grid. They are not quite ready to go as yet. The very brave Mr. Kitching runs... Uh, in front with his red flag and uh, you've got to have a lot of belief in these riders that they won't try to creep you until you say go but it is vital to get a good start here for this high powered race and the green light television company are ready to film the blast along the bypass here Mr Nichols is here in person to uh, tell us how it's all going to be put together in about five minutes, I should think, which is the time we normally allow for editing purposes for Manx Radio News, Video Vision, uh, Green Light, and Eurosport, Sky Sport, the lot. Always racing the clock in motorsport, always, to get you the information, but you can't get it any quicker than we're going to give it to you here because we're on live, and the race now is less than two minutes away. What a gaggle. 45 riders on the Castletown Bypass, every one committed to trying to be first into Balakagan. Well, somebody's got to yield, and let's hope there's enough room for them all. There should be. There's about half a mile, less than that perhaps, between a quarter and half a mile to Balakagan, and that should be sufficient to sort them all out. Then down to the Iron Gate, where they really sort of have to go round one at a time. There really isn't room for two abreast round there, though it has been tried, as we've heard recently. Still the red flag, though, not the one-minute board for this one, because it's just engage gear and go. It's not necessarily held for one minute when everybody's assembled and ready to go. There we go, engage gear. That means into bottom gear, because it's a clutch start. Stand by. This will be a terrific racket, and away they go. And who is first away? Jason Griffiths looks as if he's got it. Dave Leach, though, marginally. No, Jackson. Bob Jackson, Bob Jackson, out dragged the lot. And there's one, unfortunately, looks like Dave Madsen Migdal has not got away. Here he goes. Indeed it is him, but it looked like Bob Jackson, just marginally. Jason Griffiths had the first few yards, but couldn't get the Kawasaki to bite. Jackson hesitated, then when he got it into second gear, no one saw which way he went, and he should be first into Balakagan. But who's first at Balabeg, Roy? Well, looking down, I've just remembered I've got something to do for the next 30 minutes, but it looks as though it's Jackson who's heading the field. It looks as though it's number 10, and it is. Hard on the brakes, and right behind him, as it was in the first race, is Paul Hunt, followed by Dave Leach, followed by Jason Griffith, Simon Beck, Steve Ward, Tim Leach, Ian Locker... 18, 15, 17, 21, 33, 31, 34, 28, 64, 12, 48, 22, 24, 51, 38, 35, 58, 29, 36, 46, 52, 65, 55, 62, 47, 37, 23, 56, 59, 45 and 17. That was the order through Balabeg on the first lap of this particular race, which is of no interest to anybody, really. But, by God, what it was tremendous coming down here. But it was Jackson who led it. Jackson, number 10. Bob Jackson who led it from number 5, as it was in the first race. Paul Hunt, so two tremendous starts there. But they were absolutely breathing down their neck. There was no distance at all between them. Dave Leach, well, he could be my tip for this one. He's in good form. Number 7 was holding on to third position. Number 1, Jason Griffiths, was up there fourth by Steve number two Simon Beck in fifth position and number six there Steve Ward holding on six in six so that was the first six through there but what a sight it was as they came through Ballinorris and on the fast approach here to Ballabeg well it's the same in every southern 145 riders they'll be getting sorted out now I would imagine everybody who's on the other side of the course there will be getting an excellent view off them as they go through church bends and they'll be absolutely flat on the tank as they go down through Great Meadow up over the rise which takes them on the approach into Castletown Stadium the sweeping left hand bend there which takes them down then to Castletown Bridge 
bridge and into the view of Jeff Cannell who's on the bypass. Yes, here they come out of Castletown Corner, the cavalry. Fantastic progress it is and it's Jackson just slightly ahead but only slightly. Jackson then with a couple of yards on Paul Hunt, Dave Leach, Jason Griffiths and Simon Beck. Paul Hunt really well up there. Then Steve Ward. Tim Leach and the rest of the pack but it's Jackson who's got the advantage and he's going for the championship in the 40th anniversary year and the order was Jackson, Paul Hunt, Dave Leach going exceptionally well and Jason Griffiths and Simon Beck, Steve Ward and Tim Leach, Ian Locker Dennis McCulloch and that's it from the second lap here at the end of the first lap on to Bellabeg they're at Bellabeg they're just a fast approaching Bellabeg and it's still Jackson from Hunt but Dave Leach there straight up right amongst them from Griffiths from Beck one two three four five that's the order but it's still Bob Jackson in the lead and there's a bit of a distance a bit of a gap gone up to Steve Ward who just has to get on the straight and up a little bit it looks as though 18 Tim Leach is going to nip on the inside but he gets him back there's not all the two strokes going through they're having a good battle between themselves 33 is through 34 12 31 28 and 64 it's as hectic as it was on the first lap number 22 is the last of that particular lot going through there Decker Kelly 48 is with us now Gary Carswell 51 35 29 but it's still Jackson at the front 58 38 36 as well 52, 46, 43, 17, 47, 35, 55, 62, 23 and 37, 56, and it looks as though this could be the last machine, yes it is, number 45. So we'll go back to the program and consult and see who it was, but it was still the order as it was on the first lap. Number 10, Bob Jackson leads. We estimate it's by two point, well, an estimated lap there of two minutes, 30 seconds, which puts them round at about 102 miles per hour on this, the second lap of the 12-lap solo championship. It was Jackson from Hunt, from number seven, Dave Leach, from Jason Griffiths, from in fifth place, number two, number two, Simon Beck. They had a bit of a gap then before they went to Steve Ward. Steve Ward a little bit late on the brakes there, number six, holding on to that sixth position as he did on the first lap. Tim Leach, number 18, he might have taken over that position going through there, but a gaggle of riders, as they say, and there'll be a gaggle of riders coming to Jeff Cannell's view on the bypass for lap two. Here they come, but the yellow flags are out on the approach to Balakeg, and it's Jackson, Hunt, Leach, Griffiths, and Beck as before. No overtaking under the yellow flags, and they're waving them for Balakeg, and even stationary you can't overtake, but waved you most certainly can at Steve Ward, Tim Leach. Ian Locker is the next group. Then it's 27, Adrian McFarlane, but the flags are out for Balakagan, and they all sit up. To be fair to the riders, you wouldn't think they're slowing, but they are by their standards, as they see the flags and just lift off, as you would say, in carring terms, but roll the throttle a little bit. They're all going pretty steady, but the f their final yellow flag being waved quite vigorously at Balakagan, but the leaders should be at Bella Bay. They are, and Jackson's got a bit more lead than he did the last lap. A bit more lead there for Bob Jackson as he comes into Bella Bay, lap three. It's still Paul Hunt in second place, holding off the challenge of Dave Leach. Number one, Jason Griffiths next, cranking the Kawasaki over. Simon Beck, again, the thing seems to be revving a little bit as he goes through here and like on the over on here's Steve Ward now he's you maintain that sixth position and falsely followed by Tim Leach number 18 number 9 Ian Locker number 27 is next on the approach let's get a few of these numbers the battle of the two strokes 27 8 21 and 15 21 there number 8 Dennis McCulloch 21 being Neil Richardson and number 8 Dennis McCulloch as mentioned 12 and 34 and 33 and 31 64 and 28, 64, Ralph Suckler. Well, he'll be up in the top 20, I would think, halfway through the field. And number 22, very similar there for Decker Kelly. But they've opened a gap, but it's still Jackson at Balabeg, lap three. There's Tony Duncan going through on the two-stroke as well. Tony Duncan on the two-stroke through. Peter gives me the results. It's Balabeg to Balabeg, two minutes, 29 seconds that particular time. Jackson from Hunt, from Leach, from... 
number one, number one, Jason Griffiths from number six, number two, Simon Beck, going down to the lower part of the leaderboard. All these riders now streaming through Bella Beck here. It's all good stuff. We're looking at a piece of paper. 62 and 55 are the last two that go through there. The top bottom half of the leaderboard is, goes just in numbers only. 18, Tim Leach, number nine, number 27, number eight, 21. And that final one there, Peter, is number 15. Is that correct? That's the top 12 from Balabeg on lap three. Is it still Jackson at the start and finish, Jeff? We'll know in a moment. The yellow flags have been withdrawn for the Balakagan approach, but he's Jackson now, and he's got about three or four seconds. It looks like it's Paul Hunt in second position. It certainly is. Two seconds it is, then Leach, then Griffiths as quick as that, and then Simon Beck dropping back with the Ducati V20. He can't keep up the pace. And... It looks and sounds okay, but it's just not got the steam. And he's Steve Ward on the RC30 Honda, all on his own. And then it's Tim Leach then, the gigantic figure towering over his machine. And then Ian Locker, I think only on a 600. Then Dennis McCulloch doing wonders on a 250. Then McFarlane, then Neil Richardson, then Gary Dines are the top uh, 12 through here. But uh, it's two seconds exactly for Jackson. What is it at Bellabeg? No sign of any riders yet, but there is now, and it looks as though Jackson's, Jackson is pulling away there. He's opened up a bit more gap. It's number 10, Bob Jackson into Bellabeg. Hard on the brakes, down through the gears, down, one, two, three. Onto the belt, gets on the thing and accelerates away. It's Paul Hunt having a super ride. He's holding off Dave Leach and Jason Griffiths. Jason Griffiths looks to be pulling away now from number two, who's the next machine into view. Simon Beck, and he is the Ducati, not responding to these three hairpin bends. Here's Steve Ward again, and he's got a bit of a lonely ride there. 18, Tim Leach is with us here now, followed by number nine, Ian Locker, right behind him, but he's got ahead of him. And just got that, uh, the camera is on the side of his helmet. There it is, number eight, Dennis McCulloch, 27. Adrian McFarlane, well, he's up amongst some two strokes there as well. As we've already mentioned, as the next machine comes into view, hard on the brakes, it looks like it's number 12, Stuart Jones, and it is. It's 34, then closely followed by 34. 34 being, we've got the cut off at the bottom of the program, but the last machine that went through was number 28, Phil Reed, number 22 there as well, but it's still Jackson at Balabeg, and he's two seconds, we estimate, on the watch, it's two seconds ahead. It's Jackson's from Hunt, from Leach, from Griffiths, from Beck, from Ward. Number 18, Tim Leach, in eighth position is number nine. Ian Locker in tenth position. In ninth position, number eight, Dennis McCulloch. And holding on to tenth position at Balabeg on lap four is number 27. Number 27 being Adrian McFarland. 58 and 38 are safely through. There's Carl Bell, well he stays up at the Park Hotel with Glyn Noon and he'll be there for Grand Prix week as well. But some excitement stuff here now as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven riders come through together, the last of them being number 37. It's back to Jeff. And he's Jackson on the bypass, perfect timing and he's definitely extending his lead over Hunt now. Hunt still second, being pressed by Leach, it's three seconds this time, then Griffiths. Those are the top four through. It's number 27 and 8 that are having the dice. Dennis McCulloch and Adrian McFarlane. They've been changing positions. He's back, but he's dropping back. Well, a bit surprising that, and Steve Ward might catch him. It's a 12 lap of this one, of course. Then Tim Leach. And he's the 250 boys. Behind Locker on the 600. Then McCulloch streaking away now from McFarland, Dines and Richardson as we go off to Bellabeg. Yes, Jackson safely through Bella Norris. It looks as though it's just a fractionally bigger margin that he's got on the advantage here now. Number 10, hard into Bellabeg. Down onto the brakes, right knee goes out. Winston McAdoo racing on the side. Of that beautifully prepared machine, there's Paul Hunt, Dave Leach, same distance, but Jason Griffiths appears to mind, making to be little slightly closer to Dave Leach than he was on the previous lap. Here's Simon Beck, number two, distinct the fluorescent helmet, cranks it into Balabeg, you no doubt hear the Ducati there on the overrun, Steve Ward, he doesn't appear to be much closer to, to Simon Beck on that one, but... Tim Leach appears to be holding on to the same advantage that he had, or disadvantage he had against Steve Ward. Number nine, Ian Locker is with us, and number eight, Dennis McCulloch. Dennis McCulloch on the 250s and three, absolutely together. 27, 21 and 15, the last of them being Neil Richardson. 
so good dicing and good racing indeed but Jackson just seems to be pulling away that little bit Paul Hunt and those behind him can't seem to do anything about it uh, we don't know it was I think it was about 102 miles per hour lap the other night there's 12 and 34 and 33 31 and 28 that's the fastest lap Bob Jackson has ever been round the Balan circuit and looks as though he's on course for the Southern 100 championship we just give you a quick rundown there on numbers only for the positions after lap five at Balabeg, it's 10, 5, 7, 1, 2, 6, 18, 9, 8, and 27. Jackson three seconds ahead. We estimate two minutes, 28, uh, Balabeg to Balabeg, and holding on to what we think is about a three-second advantage over Paul Hunt at lap four. What's the, dis what's the advantage now, Jeff, as they go through, flying through the bypass? Yes, coming to the end of the fifth lap now, 12 laps this one, and here's Jackson, and he's about the same, Hunt's not giving it up as yet, about three seconds I should think, one, two, three, precisely the same, then Leach, then Griffiths, Dave Leach is quite remarkable isn't he, what a fellow he is, and Jason's just sitting there having a steady ride I think, I think uh, Jason's decided to go cautiously, he's back now on the Ducati, And next along should be number six, but Dave Madsen Migdal, who was miles behind at the start, is moving up. There's Steve Ward, then it's Tim Leach. So that's still the same order. Next should be Locker and then McCulloch, but on to Balabeg. Yes, and Jeff, uh, no, not quite. I thought it was him through, but the second machine is. The second machine is through Ballinorris Farm. Just going to swallow up a gap, Macbuck Arc and there, but the, the experience of Bob just says yes. He just nips up on the inside of number 45 there. Uh, Number 45, but as you say, Paul Hunt hasn't given up this race one bit. Jackson uh, Leach there, followed by Griffiths, so those four remaining the same as they were on the first lap through here. Balabeg going on to nearly on to complete the halfway stage of this particular race, six laps, and Simon Beck is next with us now. Number two down on the right hand side, takes exactly the same line, gets the Ducati fired up. The exhaust coming out on the normal way on that, not like Carl Fogarty's machine where they come out under the seat. And there's Steve Ward followed by number 18, Tim Leach, and the fairings, the bottoms of the fairings you can see scraped away. And Ian Locker now is under pressure from number 8, Dennis McCulloch, on the two stroke. That could be one to watch. And that same old battle between 15, 21, Neil Richardson, the middle one there in the sandwich, and number 15, Gary Dines. That's a good one to watch as they go through. So we reckons it's a three-second advantage that Jackson holds at Balabeg on lap six from number five, Paul Hunt, who in turn is just ahead of number seven, Dave Leach, from number one, Jason Griffiths, from number two, Simon Beck, from number six, Steve Ward, who is in sixth and sixth, as it was on the first lap. In seventh position, number 18, Tim Leach. In eighth position, number nine, Ian Locker. And there's a good battle on there because in ninth position is number eight, Dennis McCulloch, and challenging and holding on to tenth position, tenth position on the leaderboard. Lap, lap six at Balabeg is number 15, Gary Dines. But it's all go, Jeff, isn't it? It's a great race. Certainly is. McCulloch's having a go at Locker, too, despite being only on a 250. And he's the leader's coming now. Jackson still about the same. One, two, three, precisely the same. He's keeping it at the same. There's Leach, and it looks as if Griffiths is creeping a bit nearer to Dave Leach, I would say. But those first four are really flying. But it's McCulloch trying to pass Locker. That's the thing. The 250 having the effrontery to try and pull out of the slipstream down the bypass and pass the 600. He had a look, but he didn't get anywhere near it. He is back to plowing that lonely furrow in fifth position. Then in sixth position then should be Steve Ward, seventh number 18, and that is Tim Leach. There's Ward going through, there's Leach. We can't wait for McCulloch and Locker as we hand on to Balabeg. Yeah, Balabeg and Jackson safely through Ballinotis and swallowing up, and they're getting amongst the back markers now. He's just got through one, which is... Uh just before the approach as he did on the last lap. Paul Hunt just that same distance away. In fact, I would say it's marginally closer now, but it's still Jackson from five and number seven. Dave Leach having to take a sedate line there to get through 
what, three back markers, two back markers on that particular corner, and Jason Griffiths sitting in the slipstream there, not taking the attempt on the approach, but will probably have them now as they sweep through the right-hander, through Bala Whetstone, then the tight left-hander, which takes you through to the very flat-out bomb hole that you go through, known as the Black Dub, or the Black Hole, or whatever it is, down through there, down through by Balloon Farm. There's Simon Beck, number two, Steve Ward. Well, Steve Ward appears to be a little bit closer to Simon Beck on this particular lap, and the same distance, I would say, is Tim Leach is behind Steve Ward. There's a good dice on here, and it's Locke who's got it on this particular lap as they approach Balabeg from number eight, Dennis McCulloch. It's Ian Locker, number nine, just holding on to that advantage. 21, they're going through Neil Richardson. 15, he's pulling away as well now from number 27, it looks like it, Adrian McFarlane. So those are all the leaders through it's Jackson by three seconds Jackson by three seconds two minutes 28 seconds Balabeg to Balabeg which puts them round as though they're hitting about 103 and a half miles an hour 103 miles an hour that are hitting number 12 is with us here now number 12 they should be fast approaching now I would think number 17 Dave Manston Mickle after that bad start number 33 and 28 31 is the next one through 22 that's round about the same time that we have to go we have to go back to Jeff because such is the pace of this race that there's riders all over the circuit now but he's like Yes, they are beginning to catch the back markers now, but here's Jackson coming down the right-hand side of the bypass, overhauling a couple of them, and Hunt goes the other side. They're certainly in for a shock, and again it's three, just staying steady. Leach and Griffiths is keeping nearer. Griffiths is definitely nearer. Dave Leach now and may get a chance to close up at Balabeg as they come up on these. When I say back markers, I just mean with respect to them, of course, they are being lapped, but some of them are on 250s and it's not really a like-by-like -like contest. Number 64, a retirement there, I'm afraid, fairly early on. Uh, Ralph Sutcliffe to it in. But still, it's three seconds between the leaders, and that's Jackson and Hunt. Here's Simon Beck now, and each time we're getting Steve Ward getting a little bit nearer, Tim Leach dropping back, but back to Bella Beg. Yeah, Jackson's here, but he's got one, two, three, four people to cross. Number 51 went herring off down the slip road, but it's Jackson here going about to sweep past his brother. I would think that'll give him a cultural shock going through the bomb hole, and... Paul Hunt just has to go in the inside of there of number 52, 46 and 7, 7 has held up and Jason Griffiths takes the advantage there to get much nearer there, much nearer to, to number 7 Dave Leach. So it's all good stuff. We noticed number 51 went flying down past there. Number 51 hard on the brakes. Bruce Black shaking his head. But I think he's a retirement down on the slip road here at Big Airbed. There's number 56 safely through as well. Decker Kelly. And the last one there. Number 62 is here with us now. Mark Dines. Number 65. Let's get all these a mention. Alan Bushell. And there's Simon Beck who's got... Steve Ward right behind him now and he's looking behind to see and there's Tim Leach so they're still the same positions as they were on lap one here at Balabeg. Tim Leach there holding on to that sixth position is it? Sixth, one, two, three, four, five, sixth position. Yes, Steve Ward. And there's Dennis McCulloch and 21. He's got 21 right behind him this lap. Neil Richardson, 27, is just going slightly off the pace. Adrian McFarland as they get through to the, the eighth lap of this 12-lap race. So it's good stuff indeed. But we maintain it's still that three seconds advantage that Bob Jackson has. They're amongst the back markers now. It could go either way. Paul Hunt has not given up this race in any way whatsoever, and he's actually, I would think, pulling away from the third position man. Number 12, very quickly through there, Stuart Jones and Dave Madston Migdal, the last of that particular group going through. It's number 28 with us here now, but such is the pace of this that they will shortly be with you, get Jeff, down at the bypass. Yes, coming to the end of the eighth lap, so four more to go, and here's Jackson, but Hunt isn't that far behind. He can't afford to ease up one bit, but there's back markers on all over the show and it's still about three seconds it's maintained the same and Griffiths is right behind Leach now Griffiths is right in his slipstream as they go into Malakagan and he must be looking for third place for the Kawasaki but it's the leading Kawasaki of Jackson who's got the chance to win this Southern 100 championship further down the field number 21 uh, Richardson is nibbling McCulloch now for the leading 250 
and Dave Madsen Miggles now in the top 15 having started absolutely dead last so it's three seconds between Jackson and Hunt with uh, Leach and Griffiths beginning to close up on each other coming into Balabeg it's Jackson at Balabeg again and he seems to be pulling away now slightly ever so slightly I think he's extending that lead but it's hard on the brakes and he's down through just gets the clutch just slips the clutch a little bit to get it on the power there's Paul Hunt he's got the bottom part of his fairing missing number 43 but I took it off before the race and you're right Jeff Griffiths is challenging Dave Leach number 47 there gets past number 58 as well Patrick Robinson number 27 23 was it I just quite guess it was number 23 Alan Jackson the next rider with us now is number 52 so all these have been swallowed up by the leading trio as they circle around the top three top four positions have gone through we're looking now for fifth position it looks as though it's still Simon Beck holding on to that fifth position as number 36 goes through 36 being Stan Thomas there's Simon Beck and Steve Ward right behind him there's not all that much difference between them and Tim Leach maintaining a station about the same distance I don't know whether riding with a camera affects you or not but uh, certainly there'll be some very good footage 56 is Dick Decker Kelly 55 Robert Watterson and here's Ian Locke who's just keeping ahead but Dennis McCulloch tries to go up the inside number 21 there Neil Richardson nearly touches his back wheel as he hits the brakes and they didn't quite anticipate and he hit the brakes as quickly as that nearly touched his back wheel and went away four seconds now we maintain four seconds is the advantage that Jackson has over Paul Hunt four seconds Bob Jackson from Paul Hunt from in third position still holding on to that third position number seven Dave Leach but he's being pressed hard by in fourth position number one Jason Griffiths number 12 is the last rider we can get through before we have to fly to the bypass yes this is not Jackson though but the third of these three most certainly is and yes he's got away from Hunt now suddenly doing exactly what he did in previous races it's just short of five seconds now and Griffith still hasn't caught Leach they're still together there they go but Richardson is certainly menacing McCulloch further down the field number 21 in 10th position menacing McCulloch for ninth there he certainly fancies it and Griffiths fancies third place of that there's no doubt next along then should be number two Simon back on the Ducati but dropping back all the way and could beginning to come under some kind of pressure from number six and that is Steve Ward but at Balabeg it looks as if Jackson's gone for it and got that five seconds yes it looks as very much to do Winston McAdoo's purple Kawasaki hammers down into here again well there can't be too many laps left now flies on the screen that little touch of the clutch again number 48 goes wide 35 and I would say the advantage is being stretched a little bit there Paul Hunt noticeably a little bit further behind him Dave Leach into third got Dave uh, st st Jason Griffiths right up his chuffer there so that that's going to be an interesting dice as well we look back down to Balabeg to see the next riders approaching we don't think it's Simon Beck we've seen one two three four machines into view neither of these this is number 47 Brian Appleton followed by number 43 uh, Keith Williams and number 23 and 58 closely together there Bud Jackson and number 58 Patrick Robinson so I would think in the course of 12 laps we've got everybody mentioned there's Carl Bell again and here's Simon Beck now with Steve Ward right behind him number 52 gives way to Simon Beck but not to Steve Ward and Simon Beck again looks over his shoulder and he would probably see Tim, Tim Leach just passing Neil Cudworth on the exit there from Balabeg so we're losing track of how many to go we do say though Jackson is increasing his lead now it's up to six seconds we estimate it's six seconds and we do have a 22 minutes 26 time from Balabeg to Balabeg which puts it in the 105 mile an hour class as that three man three machine dice there goes through with the two strokes number eight Dennis McCulloch sandwiched between number 15 there Gary Dines 27 is through now 27 Adrian McFarland the next two riders in are number 55 Robert Watterson and number 62 62 Mark Danes here's Dave Madston Migdal but it's Jackson by six at Balabeg what is it at the start and finish here he comes now one two three four five six seven 
Eight seconds it is now. Jackson is going for the lap record by the looks of it, and he's pulled it away. And there's Leach still repelling Jason Griffiths. And half the field has been lapped already. There are two laps to go. Two laps to go, and it looks as if Jackson's got it in the bag. If he's being well signaled, he should be able to knock it off with eight seconds advantage over the big H. Paul Hunt, the fireman from Douglas, and how well he's riding on his Pete Beale tuned Yamaha. Eight seconds then at uh, the start. What is it at Bella Bagroy? Eight seconds it was on this particular last lap. He's got a clear run ahead of him now, so he could go for this lap record. We reckon he was in the 105, so down through the box, the back end hangs out. The tyres will be getting nice and sticky now, but it's by a mile. It's Jackson by a mile. The chain there just takes up the tension as he accelerates away, and I would say it's a subdued Paul Hunt who's just saying that he can't get anywhere near him, but what an excellent ride by Paul, there's Dave, uh, Dave Leach and chased by Jason Griffiths but he can't get past him at all, number 35 is with us here now, so it's Jackson by 9 seconds, Jackson by 9 seconds, number 48 as the brakes start to fade, Gary Carswell has to do a bit of a straight line exercise here at Bella Beg, number 29 as well, 29 Jeff Tansley and the road, would you believe it goes absolutely quiet for one machine which sweeps through the Bella Norris section, one, two, three machines interview now and still no sign yet of Simon Beck but Simon Beck is through Ballinotis now but it's number 47 who's with us Brian Appleton closely followed by Bud Jackson number 43 is there as well Keith Williams number two there's Simon Beck Simon Beck is with us, Steve Ward tries to go up the inside of number 58 but he wouldn't let him, Patrick Robinson and Tim Leach keeping us at eight distance as he has every particular lap here so two to go, I think they're on the 11th lap are they? And we've got it down 2 minutes 26 and a 9 second advantage for Bob Jackson there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 riders in the view now and there's a good old dice going here between these three and it looks as though it's Ian Locker who's holding advantage at the moment from number 8 Dennis McCulloch with number 20 21 has not given up at all Neil Richardson so it's all good stuff and as another machine comes into view just slightly off the pace now Gary Dines so Jackson by 9 at Ballabeg on the on this the 11th lap I think this is the penultimate as they call it Jeff is it? Yes there's Jackson coming along now gets the yellow flag one lap to go and he's well clear he made that break Paul Hunt wisely decided not to go with him and settle for second place but he looks a bit slower this time Hunt is he fading a bit? Maybe not, maybe just changing up, it's exactly 10 seconds and he'll have to get cracking because Leach and Griffiths are right with each other here and could catch him, I don't think so, but Griffiths definitely fancies a rostrum position here on the final lap, he's got just less than a lap to try to nail Dave Leach but he'll have some job on to do it, Dave is in super competitive form and there's a great dice on too between Ian Locker, Dennis McCulloch and Neil Richardson, number 9 8 and 21, to Balabeg for the final time Jackson in the championship. Jackson sweeps through, Jackson sweeps through Balanoris, he's got two back markers in front of him but a very healthy lead, Paul Hunt is not yet into view through Balanoris, so it's a very very healthy lead, so Jason Griffiths lap record of 105.8 miles an hour and and here's Paul Hunt now, and he's got two behind him, he's got a lap to go, and I think he just about do it, Paul Hunt, number five, probably admitted that he can't catch Bob, but he's just getting down for that second place, and Jason Griffiths could have a go now, he could have a go at him, Dave Leach though, he's hanging on there, he accelerates away and pulls on the bars as he gets the power onto that Yamaha as he accelerates away from Balabeg. So that's the first three. It's Jackson by, we estimate, 10 seconds now. 10 seconds, Jackson Liz leads on Winston McAdoo's Kawasaki in the Southern 100 Championship, 1995. He's got to go down through to the cross four ways, take the cross four ways down through Church Bends onto the Great Meadow, and that's all that lies between him and this great victory. Number 29 gets a bit of a wheelie Stuart Jones as he pulls away from Balabeg as well, and there's one more machine into view. This is the one we're holding on to fourth position, and we're just interested to get that battle. We should be able to get that through just before we have to hand over to get the the winning positions. That's uh, Simon Beck looking over his shoulder again to see number six dead behind him, number 18 Tim Leach, and number 43. And that battle that we're looking for, we should see three machines sweeping through Ballinorris. This isn't them. That's 58. Well, such is the lead that Bob Jackson's got, but there's three absolutely together. We won't have time because we've got to hand back to Jeff to get the finish of this Southern 100 Championship. Yes, and it looks like Jackson at a canter now, but he's not here as yet. Still the yellow flag with the black cross last lap. Still the others streaming through here. 
but one's pulling in number 31 is stopping I'm afraid with only one lap to go that's most unfortunate for for him that's uh, Blair Degger home from New Zealand what a shame and there's Jackson Jackson does it on the Kawasaki after some rotten luck in the past Bob has had a terrific week here and he takes it Tony Duncan pulls in he I don't think he was lapped but Paul Hunt takes second but who was third Jason Griffiths gets it Jason Griffiths nails Dave Leach on the final run in it's Jason Griffiths who gets it over Dave Leach and uh, well that evens up some of the luck Jason had previously I suppose so the first three then Bob Jackson Paul Hunt and Jason Griffiths what a great ride by the big H on a machine that really is considerably more elderly than the other two and it is a that was a great Southern 140th anniversary championship all three kept to it and a terrific dice for third there but Bob Jackson is the worthy 40th anniversary Southern 100 championship winner well done Bob thanks very much Jeff some race though eh? you had to really move yeah I felt slower than I went yesterday felt slower I think you're on lap record pace though over 105 yeah well, it certainly didn't feel like that well it looked like it from where we were standing but you suddenly made a break for it with two or three laps to go and went from two laps two seconds to five seconds yeah I, was, I thought I'd have to keep my head down in case Matt Marcus held us up a bit but uh, no, it worked out really well but Paul Hunt was going well wasn't he he's going exceptionally well is Paul <laughs> there's no chance of uh, easing up a, a, except the last couple of laps maybe yeah, the last lap I eased up a little bit. But, uh, I just looked behind to see if there's anybody behind, and then when I saw there's nobody behind, I didn't really push it when I passed the tail enders. So yeah, it was easy. Okay, any moments? None at all. Good enough. Paul Hunt. What a fantastic week he's had, and he's just talking to Jason Griffiths now. Paul, a great ride there, just showing you what you can do if you get a bike that will stay the pace and go hard. Uh, yeah, early on Bob pushed it a bit, um, we had yellow flags, he seemed to pull a little bit away when we had a bit of a crash at the top, and then I saw I'll stay positioned sort of like a few yards behind him, but he just seemed to edge your way through the back markers, and I, I settled for a safe second, I wasn't going to catch him. Wasn't that safe towards the end though, with Jason and Dave Leach coming up on you? I had to look over every hairpin, like I just eased it off, and I knew I'd come out of every hairpin, I could see they were like 100 yards behind, so I could open it a little bit if I needed to. Been a really good week for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it makes a change. Um, maybe I can get a bit of decent backer now for a good 750. But when you put all these thousands of hours and, and cash into it for no reward, you feel like chucking in, but it's moments like this that makes it worthwhile. That's right, yeah. I've got a lot of mates who've been giving us a hand. Uh, they're not professionals. They just give me a hand when they can, and they're brilliant. Godfrey Kane's always good for 50 quid, I hear. Not for me, he's not. <laughs> Jason, you managed to get Dave for third there. Yeah, just managed to get inside Dave at Town Corner on the last lap there. There was a, a, a back marker going in and, and I think Dave was in two minds as to whether to try and take him or not. And I just managed to sneak up the inside. So you're happy with third then because, uh, you know, you've had your trouble this year. Incredible racket. Let's move away from them. He's Charlie Williams again. What's he got this time? God blimey, he's got every, every bike in the paddock he's scrounged. Looks like an air-cooled TZ. It was just lying there, so I took it. I don't know whether you caught that. He said it was just lying there, so I took it. I'm sure that's bullshit. I mean, it's uh, not correct information. So, the full order, then. You hold the board, I'll get the programme out. And the full order for that race, then, was Jackson, Hunt, Griffiths, Leach... Beck in sixth position, number six, Steve Ward. Then it went 18, that's Tim Leach, then Ian Locker, then Dennis McCulloch, who managed to repel Neil Richardson, Gary Dines, Adrian McFarland, and number 12, Stuart Jones, was the final finisher that we had through there were a couple more we didn't get but they are the top 14 in this championship so I thought we'd seen the last of the classic parades uh, to my delight we haven't because we're going to have another session here this will be the final one I think and wouldn't it be nice to be stood here involved in this meeting in 10 years time we were invited by Bob Doughty yesterday to assemble in 10 years for the Golden Jubilee Jubilee uh, 
possibly we'll be able to. Uh, I'm sure many will find that 10 years has gone over just as quick as the preceding 15 have gone for me because I was involved in the 25th anniversary and that's of course a bigger gap to 25 to 40 than 40 to 50, that's pretty obvious and yet that 15 years has flown by. So the parade has come out now, good lord look at the time, half past five, hope the news is running on the other wavelength, it better had be, or the news editor will be on the warpath. What's new about that? He's a hard taskmaster, I've heard it said. Quite right too. We've got a great team there back at Bank Radio with uh, Simon Richardson and Graham Bell, John Boss, David Collister, Louise Quirk, and everybody else who helps out. So we're going to uh, keep that moving for the rest of the summer. We've got many big international events still to come. Car rally, of course, winds up the outside broadcast season, and sometimes we do the veteran cars as well. The Manx Grand Prix, amazingly, of course, has crept forward, practicing for that's on the 19th of August. And uh, yes, I think it is. Looks like his style, anyway. Yeah, certainly is. Well, here's the Brigetti Yamaha there now, coming down into Balabeg. So, Larry Burton, yes, it does really, and it's the same type of leathers as well, I must admit. Irish sidecar drivers, well, there's been quite a few of uh, particular men and Herney Coates and the boys there, I think, on the TT quizzes, who's the only man to have lapped at 100 miles an hour in a sidecar and a solo. I think it comes down to Ernie Coates and his brother, if I remember rightly, but we'll get informed about that. A big wave from somebody going away from Balabeg on this, the last lap of the classic parade. That was Roger Sutcliffe, I think it was giving us a wave as he went through. I think he was thinking he was in second position, but uh, at the same time, it's only a classic parade lap. So George Ridgen being had a, a good lap round there last night as well, and a couple of laps through this afternoon. I think this could be the last machine which has got past the flag, which is sweeping down through now. Sounds well. The Benelli hasn't been out again. That's unfortunate, but fair comment number 41 Jim Curry well another couple of cylinders on this and you would have got the old sound of the Honda 4s of the latter days that was the kind of production ones they used to put out but the four cylinder Hondas John Hartle actually brought one over here he'd had a, a bit of an accident he came over here just to get back in the swing of it and actually cakewalked the 250 class I remember that well because he actually learned the circuit on a Lambretta scooter he went round and round and round during the afternoon then just unveiled this Honda at night and went out and sorted it. So what's the position as they come into the start and finish area there? Is it Leach or Law? I don't know really, but the flag is out. That's all I know. George Costain has pulled in and in fact the pair of them come over the line side by side. Law, I suppose, if it was a race, would get the verdict, but it matters little. And they come in behind Bob Doughty here. I'll do you another imitation in a moment or two of an MV if you like, but maybe you don't like. Okay, please yourselves. There we go then, there's the boys in, and I'm sure they've enjoyed that. Con Law must be wondering whether he could still do it, but that's not advisable really to start getting those ideas, is it? Classic parading, maybe. There's a solid back end Velo coming in, and he's George Ridgen on the back of the commando. And that's it for him for this year. And I know what he said behind that visor. It was began with B, ended in Y, and the second word was marvellous. There's Larry with the chair. Yeah, and there's Peter Kane in the hot seat. And he's John Patrick, solo and sidecar star, still with the original helmet. George Short, I think this is, on the Jalira. It is him. Hasn't been running for four years, he said, and it started straight away when they ran it out the garage forecourt the other night. Of course, George has got his S&S motors just down the road from here. Roger Sutcliffe trails the Suzuki in. Type of machine has ridden by Frank Perris to third place in the senior. So, I think that's the end of our parading for this year and how worthwhile it's been as well to particularly have the Benelli to just put the icing on the cake as we stand by for the final race of the night of the afternoon indeed well feels like night we're getting a bit of feedback on the PA here I'll run away to prevent that happening 
Car blowing sounds like a jet taking off. But it isn't. It's us taking off along the bypass as Jim Curry whips the Honda in. A few more stragglers to come and then we'll line up the open sidecar event, so called, because it is a rare opportunity to see anything other than Formula 2 sidecars in action. The Formula 2 is the main British championship now and of course is the mainstay of the TD. 600cc four-stroke four-cylinder, 750 four-stroke twin-cylinder or 350cc two-stroke twin-cylinder is the spec for that but this is open machines up to 1,300cc uh, 1, Danny Shimon coming in and Len Island on a G, no it's not a G50, it's a 7R the smaller version, the 7R AJS so the open sidecars then and Dave Molyneux and Peter Hill despite me saying that the Krauser was a little bit fragile for around here he made mincemeat of those remarks last night Molyneux and Hill absolutely streaked away from it and uh, the European Championship contending machine uh, was able to dispose of the 1100 Suzuki of Bill Davey and Neil Miller with I think Jim Silver and Michael Singer third on 1100 Kawasaki so the DMR Dave Molyneux racing 500cc four cylinder two stroke Krauser shifting the 1100 four stroke four cylinder uh, Suzuki's and Kawasaki's that's because of its light weight it is much shorter it is phenomenal acceleration and an experienced and top line pilot like Dave all of those put together were enough to dispose of the four stroke threats he's got to do it again I think he will I've just noticed I'm wearing a Dave Molyneux uh, polo shirt here commemorating his association and backing and sponsorship by the Ginger Hall Hotel and uh, they put lots of effort into Dave's career in the past I think they still do and all over the island are establishments that uh, support the races and give financial assistance many of them don't crow about it some do either way it doesn't matter but uh, we admire those who don't make much of a fuss about it but just get on with it quietly and help out because the costs of motorcycle racing well they just go off the clock and the ordinary working man can hardly keep up Dave of course, Dave Molyneux in the TT week, the highlight of the year struck trouble, testing his machine at Jerby on the morning of the first race having spent a lot of time straightening out Rob Fish's machine after he pranged at May Hill when the steering jammed the the exhaust dropped down and jammed the steering and he had a big crash. Dave sorted his bike out. Then lo and behold, when he came to drive his own, he had an ignition fault and couldn't repair it and had to miss the first race. But he turned out in the second and from memory I think he was second to Fisher in that with McBoddis third. So it's been a long day here but a very, very enjoyable day. This is the type of thing that you go home and you have a snooze for half an hour or so and then you go to the prize presentation at night and having a couple of drinks and you reflect on it and you think how fabulous it all was and yet in about a week you can scarcely remember who won what it's just the whole thing that matters rather than the particularly individual race results so I think it's five weeks to the Manx Grand Prix 19th of August it's the 13th of July now so uh, it's not going to be long and a very good entry as Roy mentioned earlier it's not only the newcomers that's held up the entry in general and particularly in the classic classes and uh, that's gratifying indeed next year of course at the TT there's talk of having two 600cc supersport races on the same day I can't see that coming off myself but well, it won't be for me to decide and uh, a variety of other changes to the program to tart it up good TT this year of course plenty of uh, activity one or two problems down the prom that need to be addressed for the entertainment side but Roy you've probably seen the sidecars go through now at Balabeg and how do they look? Yeah they were looking good actually Jeff but just on the exit from Balabeg I think one of them struck a bit of trouble there's a bit of activity over there now so it could delay the start slightly obviously as you mentioned before they don't you come over here they don't want to kind of uh, delay or anything like that on the start line but the travelling marshals had stopped we didn't quite see the number of it I don't know whether it's terminal or something that can be rectified, it might just be a bit of adjustment, but they went through on their parade lap, they were all the ones number 10 is it? No, number 9 number, we're getting some hand singles number 5 
45 it is, number 45, who stopped just on the exit from Bella Beg here, so we'll have to consult our programme to see who that is. Number 45, Mick Hudson and Norm Oxley on the 700 Yamaha, just making adjustments on the exit from Bella Beg. So whether they'll be able to delay the start for them to get back, or whether it's terminal or not, I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty certain they won't be far away from you there as well. But at the same time, it could be a good, uh, good lap. We've just consulted the old programme. 94.79 was Steve Webster's fastest lap ever, I think, round here, and I think he holds on to the lap record. But 94.38 was Dave Molyneux's fastest lap on the other night. Well, the other night? God, it was last, it was last night, number 42. So it doesn't look as though that number 45 is going to get underway, but they could be all on the line there for the start of this last event, Jeff. Yes, they are. There's not too many of them, it's got to be said, but at least it's something different with the open capacity classes and it's a chance to see sidecar racing as it used to be with the 750 Yamahas and the 1100 Suzukis, which do have their own British championship, but really it's not terribly well supported uh, compared with the Formula 2, which was brought in to supposedly make sidecarring higher class. I uh, could never see that myself, and supposedly... Uh, to make it slower, which indeed it did for a long number of years, but the outright TD lap record uh, is held by Mick Bodice, and the Formula 2s now are within about 10 seconds of that, so that's the development they've made over the past six or seven years. The 600cc motor is quite phenomenal in the Formula 2, and there are some in this, and it included last night Jeff Bell and Nick Roach on Ian Bell's Wendell Yamaha, uh, but he was only fifth in that, I don't know whether he was fully competitive and whether he could, in fact, keep up. But the start is imminent. Engage gear. Clutch start. Tricky on sidecars, a clutch start. But off we go. Right behind the tree, Tim. Here we go, then. And it was number 56 first away, Sean Hegarty Jr. and Stuart Coe from Felixstowe. And Dave Molyneux was only about fifth or sixth. And there's still one outfit on the line struggling to get fired up. But about 15 outfits have made it off the line here. And the green one which we see on the line is hoping to get going to get a push. And it does fire up, but I must say it's not uh, looking too clever at the moment. But it was number 56 who got the start. Sean Hegarty Jr. and Stuart Cole with the 1100 Suzuki. Are they still there at Ballabag, Roy? No, not as yet, but they will be. They are now because it's still a green. Looks, looks like a green outfit. No, just it's very difficult to pick them up as they go through. But it looks as though Bell is up there amongst it. No, it's number 20... Number 56 and 41. And the back end's hanging out on these boys. are trying here. Dave Molyneux there, fifth. 57, 50, 51, 43, all safely through, 55, 58 as well, 67, that's the last one through, it looks as though Mr Oates has got a run out there in that particular one after having trouble with it, so we settle ourselves down, it was pretty hectic for the first lap of this sidecar, but we can go through them now on numbers and put some times and differences there, but it was just number 56 that looked as though it had the lead, number 56 it was, Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe holding on to the advantage that they had at the start from number 64. Now we don't actually find him in our programme. That must be an addition to the programme. We'll have to do that after or we can give you some indication on that. But it was number 64 who was second from 41. 41, Bill Davy and Neil Miller. Well, they were runners up on, on last night. From number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer. 49 was there, Jeff Bell and Nick Roach. And 42, Dave Molyneux and Pete Hill only in one, two, three, four, sixth position at Ballabeg on lap one. So 56 from number 64, who we haven't identified as yet, but no doubt you will tell us, Jeff, from number 41, whether that's a mistake or not, but Peter's been very good all afternoon, Bill Davy and Neil Miller. So all the sidecars safely through, the 1,000 cc's, eight laps I think they've got to do on here, 34 miles, so obviously our man up the road there, number 45, Mick Hudson and Norman Oxley didn't get going, unfortunately they come all this way over, and then it stops at Ballabeg on the warm-up lap, so disappointment for them, but it looks as though Dave Molyneux has got a bit more to do than he did have last night, so we'll be flying through the start and finish shortly, and what will be the position there, Jeff? 
Well, the position is we don't know who 64 is either because he hasn't been posted to us as an additional starter. But here comes the pack now, and it's still... Oh, no, it's 41 in the lead now. Bill Davey, then 56, then Dave Molyneux is third. Molyneux up to third now, and I think Molyneux should be OK to win it. There's eight laps, not six, so he's got plenty of time. Compared with the six-lapper last night, he can afford to pace it just a little bit. So 41, the leader. Previous winner, Bill Davy and Neil Miller, who were second last night, 1100 Suzuki. Second is number 56, Sean Hegarty Jr. and Stuart Coe. Third, number 42, Dave Molyneux and Pete Hill. Fourth, number 49, Jeff Bell and Nick Roche. Uh, fifth, number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer. And sixth, number 48, Brian and Neil Kelly. Back to Balabeg. Yes, number 64 is a misprint in our programme here at Balabeg. We haven't got such a 64, but number 41 we have got. He's with us now, Phil Davy. Number 56, closely received there by Molly. 56 being Sean Hegarty. Number 46, and Bell, Jeff Bell is up there amongst them as well, number 49. And they've pulled out a good bit of a lead there on this second lap now as they go through from the next machine, which approaches at a very fast rate of knots. Number 48, Brian Kelly and Neil Kelly from number 57. Andrew Williams and Rob Jones from Cliff Richard and Kevin Morgan from number 50. Greg Lambert and Dickie Gale from 55. And there was another machine in between them. So there's two distinct batches now, but it was still led by number 41, Bill Davy and Neil Miller on the 1100 Suzuki here at Balabeg on lap two. Here's number 67. That could be the highest number, but it is. It's Artie Oates. It looks like it's Artie Oates and Greg Mann in the chair on that particular one. So Balabeg to Balabeg. We had two minutes 44 seconds for number 41, Bill Davy and Neil Miller holding on to an advantage over number 56, Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe. They, in turn, had a very, very short advantage then over number 42. They're the ones to look out for, Dave Molyneux and Pete Hill. Pete Hill just ahead of number 48, is it? 49. 49, I'm reliably informed, Jeff Bell and Nick Roach in fourth position. In fifth position, it was number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer. In sixth position, number 48, Brian Kelly and Neil Kelly. In seventh position, number 57, Andrew Williams and Rob Jones and in 8th position on this leaderboard unofficial leaderboard but they're all in line going through here at Balabeg in 8th position number 51 Cliff Richard and Ken Morgan I think this actually one is decided over two legs, it's an open sidecar class so is it the position the same at the grandstand Jeff? Well we'll see now of course Davey was second in the first race Molyneux was first, so it's between them for the overall outright victory, maybe. And it's 41, Davy and Miller, who still lead, but Molyneux's up to second. So they're level on aggregate. In third position is 56, Sean Hegarty. So first and second, second and first, different order. I think Molyneux will win it, though. 46, Silver is next along. Then 49, Jeff Bell. And that's down as the 600 Windle Yamaha, and clearly it just doesn't have the legs of the big outfits, although Molyneux, of course, is a 500, it's a very different type of 500, a Grand Prix-type machine. Very light, very quick, very rapid on acceleration. So the leader then is 41, Bill Davy, but Molyneux is inching up on him. About three seconds here, Molyneux shouldn't be far behind at Balabeg. No, it's still number 41 that we see flashing through Bellinoris, but it's a close, he's, he seems to be maintaining his advantage. Number 41 is very, very quick into Balabeg on this lap, swings the back end round, but Dave Molyneux is right behind him, but he's having a bit of a struggle to make an inroads into him. There's number 56, Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe, and those first three have opened a bit of a gap there now. Into the Balabeg comes number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer, followed by number 49, Jeff Bell and Nick Roach. And those first six are well ahead, well ahead indeed. I think it's the first six, is it? One, two, three, first five machines through. Well on offer tonight is, so for this particular leg, is the JC, I think it's the Disco down. It used to be the old 370 Disco Cup for the winner of this sidecar leg down there, the old 3-7 disco down in Castletown Square. There's a gaggle of riders coming through now, number 57 there, Andrew Williams, Cliff Pritchard, Ken Morgan, 50 and 43, a very tight line on the inside by Rod Bellis and Jeff Knight. Well, they had a good result the other night. Oh, no, did they? No, not in the particular first one, but they're going well this particular one. 
so Bella Beg to Bella Beg, two minutes 44, and it's still being led by number 41, Bill Davy and Neil Miller, from just by number 42, Dave Molyneux and Pete Hill, who in turn are just ahead of number 56, and those first three have opened up a bit of a gap, Sean Egerty and Stuart Coe. Then comes number in fourth place, number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer. In fifth, number 49, Jeff Bell and Nick Roach. In sixth place, number 48, that's Brian and Neil Kelly. In seventh, number 57, number 57 up there amongst them. A newcomer to the circuit, Andrew Williams and Rob Jones on the Kawasaki. And in eighth place, it's number 51, Cliff Pritchard and Kev Morgan. So that's the first eight here from Bella Begg. And there's no other machines there now, but they won't be far away from you, Jeff. I think Such Dave, is the pace of this race. That's right. I think Molyneux will be leading this time, and here they come. And he is. Yep, he's overtaken 41. Molyneux then from Bill Davy. Molyneux going for the double. Third position now, 56. Hegarty. 1100 Suzuki really on the pipe. Next, 46. Jim Silver and Michael Singer and Jeff Bell next the nearest thing to Silver is not the Lone Ranger's backside it's uh, Michael Singer crouching on that sidecar platform trying to hang on over these ferocious bumps of this circuit you know you go around in a car at 50 mile an hour and you notice the bumps but going around at 100 mile an hour on a three wheel is something else but it's Molyneux in the lead and I think again at Bellabeg Roy yes Molyneux in the lead at Bellabeg and he's pulled out the advantage that he was disadvantaged on the last lap going head down Dave Molyneux 42 throws it round gets the power down 41 he's not, well, he's not too far behind him Bill Davy and Neil Miller are in third place the outfit shaking as they put the front brakes on, number 56, and swing the back round there, that's in third position, Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe, and in fourth position now we have into Balabeg, number 46, got the speed or the tack order or the rev counter on the outside of the fairing then, number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer are missing a gear. But finally finding one, Jeff Bell and Nick Roachwell, that's his brother's outfit, so if he's listening across, or he's with them over on the island, he won't be too happy about that, as the Reb sword as Jeff Bell and Nick Roach, Mr. Gear on the exit from Balabeg here on the 600 Windle Yamaha. That's Ian Bell's uh, machine, I do believe, or it was revealed as being Ian Bell's machine. Purple fared outfit now into Balabeg, it's number 48. Hard on the brakes, Brian and Neil Kelly, and there's one, two, three, four, five outfits now, led by Cliff Pritchard and Kev Morgan. Down through the box, number 51, keeps the back wheel down, turns around. They've had a rare old dice, 43, bringing up the rear of the field there. Rod Vellis and Jeff Knight, and the blue fared outfit, the last one we've got through. So it's Molyneux, Molyneux leads, Molyneux leads by... Well, it's about as much as he was behind the last lap. I would say 10 to 15 yards on the road, possibly a couple of seconds in time. Molyneux leads from 41, Bill Davy and Neil Miller. From number 56 in third place, 56, Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe. From 46, 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer. They make up the top four. There's a bit of a gap then to number 49. 49, Jeff Bell and Mick Roach from 48, 51 and 50. They make up the top eight from Balabeg. What's the position down through the start and finish? Molyneux yes. passing us now and way clear. Three, four, five, six, seven seconds is the advantage for Molyneux. And that is four laps done. Seven seconds in third position then. As before, Sean Hegarty, but it's number 57 who's had problems. Andrew Williams and Rob Jones from Care Philly have dropped from 7th position to 11th. That's the fourth crew going through there. That's Jim Silver and Michael Singer from Aberdeen. There is Jeff Bell and Nick Roche. Roche crouched hard down in the chair to lessen the wind resistance. So it is seven seconds here. Is it similar at Balabeg? Well, Molyneux through Ballinorris and fast approaching Balabeg. Balabeg. Is it lap five? I think it is, yes. Lap five of this particular sidecar race. Swings it through, takes a tight line. 
Gets the power down. Pete Hill kind of gets it over the back wheel to keep it there. But there's not a great deal of difference between them, Bill Davy and Neil Miller. But they are going about. We've got to be hanging on tight there to keep that that passenger there working overtime to keep the power down onto the back wheel to get as much traction and grip as possible away from this hairpin. And 56, well, Road and Track Motorcycles, bit of sponsorship there for Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe. Road and Track Motorcycles, also the sponsors of our, our world campaigner, Steve Colley, number 46, Jim Silver and Michael Singer on the Baker Kawasaki. Well, that's another maker of outfits and frames. Uh, Tony Baker, great campaigner on the old European and world circuit as well at one time and was a campaigner down here at the Southern 100 on the Worm Outfits and the last one you heard going through there was Jeff Bell and Nick Roach not missing a gear this time and they pulled out a bit of an advantage the first five pulled out a bit of an advantage over the next ones but it looks as though it's Molyneux Molyneux and Hill on the Krauser well ahead of number 41 we make it on the watch Eight seconds, eight seconds the difference it is from number 41, Davy and Miller, who in turn have got a good advantage over number 56. Number 56, Sean Hegarty and Stuart Coe, who in turn hold a good advantage over 46. There's number 48 with us now. Brian and Neil Kelly and Cliff Pritchard's got a good battle on here, but he's keeping his nose in front of them. 51, 43 and 50. And sponsored by Dad is the last one that goes through number... 43, 43, it's got written on the side, sponsored by Dad. Rod Bellis and Jeff Knight, so a good old dud there. So Dave Molyneux pulling away and making a, a meal of this race as they fly through the start and finish, Jeff. They are doing just that. Here they come. And the German-developed Grand Prix engine there, running really sweetly. Perfect carburation. 10, 11... 12, 12 seconds it is, 12 seconds, so that's four more seconds than previously in one lap as Molyneux undoubtedly goes to try to break the lap record. He should do it, I should think, with that very rapid machine, and let's hope he gets a good run. Dave could be in the Grand Prix if he had the money. 56, and be competitive is what I meant. Sean Hegarty is in third position, fourth is the next crew along, 46. Jim Silver back to Bella Bag. Yes, no sign of Dave as yet through Bellanoris, but now there is that distinctive blue fairing streaking through Bellanoris, absolutely head down, the flat on the tank and the revs roar, and then they drop down, they go through the box, one, two, three, and into Bellabeg. Rip, rip, rip the throttle, and away they go. And Pete Hill's got a unique style of kind of crouching. He doesn't get over the back, the right over the back of it, but then again, these big worm outfits have got provision for doing that, and 41, they've got a camera on board as well, so that will be good viewing. I think that I think everybody in particular races here have had a camera on board. Bill Davy and Neil Miller there, number 41, but seem to be dropping further behind. We make it actually Bella Beg to Bella Beg, two minutes 40, which would give them a 95 an hour lap speed, and hard on the brakes, and just about getting round and shaking his head in disgust for that performance was the third place that was Hegarty and then number 46 he's through as well Jim Silver and Michael Singer so Sean Hegarty number 56 not too impressed I think it was number number 56 was through yeah and Molyneux holds on to a 15 second advantage 15 second advantage at Bella Beg there's 49 49 Jeff Bell and Nick Roach on the Windle Yamaha safely through and uh, with eight laps on this particular one, we're on lap number six now, so two to go, and a 15-second advantage. Well, not quite two laps to go, because the boys will now be hammering down through the Great Meadow, down through Stadium Bends, and on the approach to Castletown Bridge. Sharp right, then it is. Three hairpin bends on this Balloon circuit, and three exits there, where you'll be seeing black tyre marks for the next the rest of the year as, they, as the boys put the power down. So good racing indeed, but Dave Molyneux pulling ahead, 15 seconds ahead of number 41, Bill Davy and Neil Miller, who in turn is from number 56, who wasn't too impressed with his performance round Bella, Bella Beg here on the last lap, Sean Hegarty, but fast approaching the start and finish should be Dave Molyneux. Yes, with only two laps to go, and this is the conclusion of the Southern 140th anniversary meeting, and here now is Molyneux. Shuts off for Balakagan as the second crew come down. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 seconds it is between Molyneux and Bill Davey. With Peter Hill for Molyneux and Neil Miller for Bill Davey. The equally deserving crewmen. 
just like the rallies the co-driver it's a teamwork job perhaps more, slightly more so in this 56 is neck through and that is Hegarty followed as usual but with the streamlining clapping on 46 Jim Silver but with one more full lap to go over to Balabeg. Yeah one more full lap plus the distance from Balabeg through to the start and finish and Dave Molyneux is here number 42 round Dennis Trollop Racing Services sponsorship on the side of that as well and gets away very neatly indeed and the second machine has just gone through the sweeping left hander through the Bell and Norris farm section and coming into our view now is number 41 Bill Davy with that lap and a bit to go number 41 hard down the black visors on both passenger and because the sun although it seems to be dipping down a little bit on the right hand side there now it was directly into their faces going down the bypass last night we heard from various riders so the black bars are advisable for this particular late race and the last race of this what has been a fantastic southern hundred meeting and number 56 much better through there that time Sean Hegarty but a bit of a clout on the fairing from somebody and he was a little bit wild on that particular one so making inroads but not too bad thing Jim Silver He's had a bit of a crack somewhere because the fairing has cracked on the left-hand side of that particular machine, number 46, Jim, Sing Jim Silver and Michael Singer. Another machine interview. There's that good old battle going on there. Cliff Pritchard between 51, 43 and 50. And that's good entertainment. If you want to watch that, that's a good one to watch. 49, Jeff Bell and Nick Roach are safely through as well as the field gets strung out here. We did hear a story about somebody who'd volunteered to do a bit of passengering over at the Southern 100 and had a couple of laps in practice on Monday night and decided that was enough. I'm not absolutely certain here it was, but it reminds me of the story about, uh, I think it was somebody in the TT who just pulled in and the passenger jumped out, jumped over the fence and said, that's enough, I've had enough and doing... I'm not going to have any more to do with that. But when you're hiring down that bypass at 100 mile an hour behind a bit of fiberglass, it must be exciting, Jeff. It certainly is, and the flag goes out now for the final lap of the 40th anniversary meeting, and the sun graces the last lap for Dave Molyneux. Sun comes back out just in time, and Artie Oates cannot believe it that he's been lapped. But, in fact, it's not him, that's why. It's Andrew Williams and Rob Jones, who I confused last night. Apologies to all concerned, but Dave Molyneux and Peter Hill, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2. 22 seconds it is. 22 seconds the advantage now. And, in fact, I noticed that uh, on the last occasion, number 50, Greg Lambert, had got ahead of 43, Rod Bellis. That dice on the road is good, but for the final time, over to Balabag. Yes, it is good. They've just gone through, but number 50 is in that uh, that three-way dice is in the last part there, so he's lost out. But I think the way they went through Balabag, they could be sorting themselves out through to cross four ways. But Dave Molyneux here. Last lap, number 42, comes up to Dave Molyneux. But, but... It just dies on the exit from Balabeg. He's searching for gears. There's none there. Dave Molyneux in trouble at Balabeg on this last lap. It's something gone wrong with the chain or something's happened there. The gearbox has gone on it. So drama, in, well, drama indeed. How can you say that? And the boys, he's just packed in. It just went to search for the gears. Carl Wilkie is here now. He's going to look around the corner. So right to the end, this 40th anniversary of the Southern Hold. Southern 100 holds drama because Dave Molyneux has stopped just on the exit from Balabeg. Carl Wilkie, no, Bill Davy and and Neil Miller will go past them and see them there and wonder what on earth that they've done to deserve to win this race but Dave Molly in trouble and number 56 will now take over second place and he'll see them there stranded by the side of the road on the right and somebody's getting the black flag for that loose fairing it's somebody getting the black flag so they'll have to pull in and have a look at it and see and it's number 46 it is 46 Jim Silver and Michael Singer well they were holding on to third and they're looking at the fairing and deciding what to do with it the travelling marshal giving them just when you think it's all going to be over and everything's sorted out Dave Molyneux stops, number 46 gets pulled in, Jeff Bell is coming up now and they'll probably move up into third position will he? He will do, number 49 Jeff Bell moves up into third so Bella Begg on the last lap of this 40th anniversary Southern 100 meeting one but, but black flag for a loose fairing and further down the road you've got Dave Molyneux stranded and that puts Jeff Bell up into third place I just can't believe it, what drama what excitement, what every, well not excitement for those who were stopped or got black flagged but certainly it just, when you just raise your voice it's getting a little bit tired at the end of the day so it will be a very surprised Bill Davy and Neil Miller who I believe are going to win this last race Jeff.
Yes, and not only that, but of course, win on aggregate as well. Second and first, it couldn't possibly be beaten because the only person who could beat them would be Molyneux, and uh, he can't do it despite his win. So it's Bill Davy and Neil Miller from Mark Inch with the 1100 Suzuki who are going to be totally surprised to win this. I'm sure second would have done them. That would have been two seconds that have been second overall on aggregate, but now they're going to win the 40th anniversary Southern 100, the final race, and on aggregate in the open sidecar class. And here they come down the bypass, and they do take it and there's someone overjoyed running down the pavement here with a pet signaling board and can't believe it punishing the air with delight number 41 it is bill davy and neil miller who take it and with a camera on his helmet there as well 67 comes in behind him that's Artie Oates. sorry Artie, i said you'd been lapped in fact i don't think you were there i think you just escaped at the very end but, uh, well, Artie's had his day with some electrifying performances in the past but it is number 41 the Scots who pull into the paddock as the overall winners and what a fantastic performance that was but hearts out to Dave Molyneux stuck at Balabeg with the chain probably or a gearbox shaft or something gone on it so Bill and Neil are the winners, he disconnects he's got a camera on here, it's uh, probably still transmitting onto the video but you did it fantastic, I bet you couldn't believe it when you saw Molyneux stopped No, I saw the crowd at Balabeg standing up looking and there was yellow flags but I never for a minute imagined it would be Dave and can I just say right now there's absolutely no way we would have won that if Dave Molyneux had finished the race Well that's what happens in motorsport uh, It really was riding so well, I'm surprised they held him off for so long actually because I'm physically knackered lumping this thing round so your second last night and first today, winner on aggregate overall in the uh, Jubilee meeting, the 40th anniversary. Terrific performance, whether you feel tired or not, it's not the same as when you've been stopped out on the circuit. If you win, suddenly the tiredness isn't as bad. Oh no, not at all. Uh, shoulders are aching, the skin's off my arms, but that's us three times overall champions on the road. You'll still lift a few pounds tonight and the silver trophy, I'm sure. I think you might be right there, Jeff. yeah. OK, and for passenger Neil... Equal congratulations, it very much is a two-man effort and well done. Thanks very much, Jeff. I would just didn't have a match for Dave, but unfortunately for him, he broke down. Sounded as if the chain was off or the gearbox lay shaft or something's gone. It was gearbox, he couldn't get a gear. Uh, I wasn't sure what it was, he was just stopped up. So. Good job, you kept the pressure on then to, to take over when, when he conked out. We're going as hard as we could feel we could go, so we just didn't have the measure for Molly. OK, well, you are the overall winners in second position then. Uh, 56 second position there for Sean Hegarty Jr. and Stuart Cole in, in a newcomer ride, well done thank you very much uh, you had a tremendous start there, you were definitely first away uh, just took it, well, Dave had a bit slow off the start, took advantage of that but the local people got past me, no problem at all but uh, eventually Molyneux came flying by and of course you were thinking that would be the last you'd see of it that certainly was. Unluckily, he broke down at the back there. They saw for him. He should win. Okay, well, tell me about this setup. Who pays for it all? Dad. Mum and Dad all the time. Dad's bike from last year. And it's sold now, worse luck. Well, we're only on uh, clear peach water here, but I think it'll be something stronger tonight, will it? It slightly will be. A few bourbons and, and cokes and a big celebratory drink for us all, I think. Okay, I forgot your position from last night. Fourth. So fourth and second then, that should be good for perhaps second overall or third at the worst. Oh, I didn't realise we were second. All oh, right, I think so anyway, is that right Tim, or third? Yeah, second. Yeah, second, yeah, second. <laughs> I'm getting nervous of this after the Mick Loft House job in TD week, and who was third then? Jeff Bell. Uh, 49, Jeff Bell and Nick Roche, and here they are, and Jeff was on Ian's bike and grabbed third there at Molyneux's expense, I'm afraid. Yeah. It's a good ride for you on the 600. Yeah, I had a bit of a shock on about the fourth lap. was still hanging on to Molly, and um, I can't remember who was in front of him. Sean Haggerty and Jim Silver on at the back of us at Castle Long Corner and nearly turned us over, you know. Really, that's why he was black flagged, understand. Crazy. You shouldn't ride like See that. number 46, is he? Yeah, I saw the streamlining ripped. I don't know, you just shouldn't be allowed. You can't ride like that here. Crazy. All right, well, you're home and dry anyway, and so is he, but it must have been a near squeak. And Nick Roche's feet would be sticking out the back. Did he get rammed in your feet or the back of the outfit or what? He, he ran into the back of us, going to Castle, uh, to Castle Town Corner. He nearly turned us over and trapped my feet under and threw me forward. Have you broken your toes? No, I think my knee's aching a bit now. It's a bit sore, but I'll have to have a look later. Oh, well, you've got a third out of it. It'll be a few quid to try and pay the, the bills and maybe enough left over for a pound of lager tonight, eh? 
I don't drink, I only drink Coke, so... Well, you can buy me one, then. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks. OK, that's it, then. Those are the top three crews in the open sidecar. Very shortly, the roads will be open. In fact, I believe they are already. Indeed, they are, because the traffic is waiting on the exit from Balakagan. The roads open very, very rapidly, indeed, here, after what has been an absolutely electrifying afternoon of motorcycle racing and parading. I hope you've enjoyed our full coverage. I think Roy Moore's done really well there to come in on that, and to everybody else back at Douglas Head Studios as well, who's uh, masterminded it, Stuart Watterson on the handovers and the uh, timings. Well done to everybody. I hope you've all enjoyed it. What a great day, but don't forget the prize giving tonight in Castletown Square and come along and join in the party atmosphere. The roads now are open on the Balan circuit, and that concludes the racing from the Southern Hundreds. So from me, Jeff Cannell, and Tim O'Hanlon at the start here, we hand you now back to the studios. <laughs>